Good morning, everyone, and happy Tuesday. There we go. All right. So today I want to talk about rawhide because I've talked about it before, and it's a topic that I get very fired up about, mostly because I still see, and I know pet stores will probably always sell rawhide. However, it is so bad for your dog that you're slowly poisoning them, and I'm going to explain why. And at the end, I'm going to link a video that you can watch because it's a comedic version of the process and the creation of rawhide. And I think that every pet parent should watch it. It's only about four minutes long or something. Um, but the basics. Rawhide trees come from the inner layer of horse and cow hides. During manufacturing, their hides are cleaned with harsh chemicals and cut or ground. That part most people know. They get stripped of all their hair with more harsh chemicals because we don't want the animals eating the hair. I should say our pets eating the hair. They're then pressed into chewable dog treats of different shapes and sizes to make them more appealing to owners and dogs. Some rawhide treats contain flavorings or colorings that make them look more appealing. But again, it's just chemicals. Why it's bad for your dog. Rawhide bones and other edible chews can pose a choking and blockage rest, risk. So if the rawhide gets lodged in your pet's throat, they can actually choke and die from this. In fact, this is a much bigger risk than contamination or digestive irritation, which is also, I wouldn't really call it a risk because unless your pet has an iron stomach and can eat anything and not care, then I would say digestive irritation is also a concern because you're weakening your pet's digestive system over time by giving them this. But choking and blockage is a serious condition a serious condition if you don't know pet CPR and a lot of people don't or if you don't live immediately near an emergency hospital. If your dog swallows large pieces of rawhide it can get stuck in the esophagus or even in the digestive tract and block their digestive tract and then they have to have emergency surgery for their intestines to remove the rawhide. So rawhide can contain bleach, I'll do it on the side because the light, bleach, formaldehyde, which is used, as far as I recall, is used to, in the, um, what's it called? Not the coroner's office, but the people at the funeral home that prepare the body, embalming, that's the word. Um, glue to hold it together. That's how they roll it into little strips with the knobs on the end. Chem three, four, chemical flavorings to make it more palatable because it doesn't really have any flavor. After all, they've washed it, taken all the hair off, bleached it, made it look more appealing, but the taste is probably pretty bad. And that's why they add flavoring dental chemicals in order to convince people that it's good for their teeth they actually add additional chemicals so that people will buy them more because there's been a decline in the people buying rawhide and that makes me very happy um but some people are still on the rawhide train um not to mention the other a dozen other dangerous chemicals that are put into rawhide but there are a lot of substitutes and tendon chews are pretty common. They're usually just dried pieces. They're usually about this long. And it's just tendon that's dehydrated. And it has all the nutrients, no processing whatsoever. Try to find some that are single ingredient from a reputable place that doesn't have any chemicals, preservatives, any of that. No dental chemicals either because chewing it, itself will help strengthen your pet's jaw muscles because tendons are very rough to chew. You can also get tracheas and some of them you can get actually stuffed with things like tripe or sweet potato or ground up meat of any kind. Um, but they're basically a yay long, kind of a tube shape. Um, 
and that's a really easy chew. It's actually a lot softer for them, so if your dog does have dental problems, uh, tracheals are a much better choice because it's not going to hurt their teeth when they're chewing on it because for my dog, she's only five and she likes marrow bones. So I actually have one here. Hold on. We've got two sizes. She is about 60 pounds, but again, pick the size relative to the size of your dog. Obviously, bigger dogs, they'll give them really tiny ones because they can choke on it. But we have the regular marrow bone. This is the pretty average size. It's about that big. We also have the longer ones. So you can see the two sizes are a little bit different. But usually they're stuffed with marrow. And the idea is that the dog licks all the marrow out, chews on the bone a little, and then stops. Because they don't want to damage their teeth on the bone. But the marrow has a lot of good nutrients in it for them. And it also entertains them for quite a while on days, I call it a present. So on days when, you know, something really busy is going on, or maybe it's raining all day, or I have to go to an event and somebody else is here watching her, I give her a present and it keeps her occupied. Make sure if you're giving them um, any of these things that they have lots of water available to them, because usually after all the chewing, they will be really thirsty. Dehydrated treats is also another really easy option. They're not as, I'll say durable, but they don't last as long. A marrow bone will keep her occupied, depending on the size. The small ones for maybe an hour or two, the bigger ones for maybe three to five hours. But she's a busy girl, she likes having things to do. But for more senior animals, dehydrated treats may be a safer option. Or puppies, things like little dehydrated sweet potato or apple treats or... Uh, pumpkin, anything like that. I've even seen dehydrated um, little sardines. Just be careful not to give them too many of that because they have a high salt content. But there are lots of substitutes for rawhide. If you're unsure about the treats, read the ingredients and look at the company and the other products that they make. If most of the products that they make are highly processed, then I wouldn't pick that treat for them. I will link the video for how to make rawhide. It's uh, <laughs> it's a spoof by Dr. Karen Becker and Rodney Habib. They also did a documentary about dog cancer, but essentially it's a comedic story that involves stuffed animals, but it's very entertaining. So I suggest you watch it if you're curious, but please, please, please do not feed your pets rawhide. I remember, um, when Kaya turned one, somebody gifted me a bag of rawhide for her birthday and unbeknownst to them, I threw it in the garbage because I do appreciate the gift and it's the thought that counts, but I would rather not give her any of that. She has a sensitive stomach as it is and giving her heavily chemically laden treats is not good for her. So thank you to whoever gave it to me, but I uh, did, not, did not give that to her. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day and I will see you later this week for an Instagram live for Kaya's gotcha day on Saturday because five years ago on Saturday, I got to bring Kaya home and I have lots of fun stories to share. So enjoy the rest of your week and I will see you then.